What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Graceland Cemetery here in Chicago, Illinois. And today what we're going to do is we're just going to take a little lap around this lagoon here because there are a lot of notable people here and there are a lot of really interesting graves here. So I'm going to take you take a walk around and we're going to see what we can see. This right here is the final resting place of George Pullman, who is known for the Pullman train car. Lived 1831 to 1897. That is quite a memorial. It's pretty hard to capture the true size of this. Now there's a lot of notorious people here, a lot of notables, a lot of politicians, actors, sports figures, a little bit of everything. Now Graceland Cemetery is one of the older cemeteries in Chicago. It is a few blocks away from Wrigley Field and there's also wildlife. You guys can see there's a coyote crossing the road over there. Hopefully you can see that on there. But there's also a lot of really neat architecture here. This is the grave of I believe his name is Pete Schoenhofen, and I believe he was a brewer, but he has one of the nicer mausoleums here, shaped like a pyramid. That is just awesome. But you don't see things like this in very many places. That is just a beautiful spot right there. As you can see, the handle is a snake. There's something really cool about coming to some of these older cemeteries like this because there's just a lot of really neat things here and there's a lot of famous architects buried here also and a lot of those famous architects also designed a lot of these gravestones. Now this is a pretty known memorial here. This is Martin Ryerson. And I believe this was designed by Lewis Sullivan. One of a couple different ones that he did here. Another one is the, the famous Getty tomb on the other side. And I'll show you guys that in just a few minutes. But we'll work our way around the, the area here. Hopefully you guys can hear me okay. There's uh, a lot of sequoias. There's a lot of trains going by. There's a lot of noise in this cemetery. A lot of different things, critters and automobiles trying to wake the dead in here. But this is one of the cooler ones here too. This is the Kimball tomb. I'll show you guys this. William Wallace Kimball. Now he was a piano maker. I believe it was called Kimball International Pianos. But he was a very, very wealthy man back in the day. A very important man in the city of Chicago. And the now faceless angel. But this thing is massive. There's not too many cemeteries that you're going to see things like this. Well, we'll continue our walk around. Now this cemetery is very, very big. Um, some of the more notable people are buried around the, the lagoon here. But I'll show you guys a few. Some of them I recognize the names of, some of them I don't. But any of these uh, ones here, I'm also filming a, it's going to be a famous graves tour, and I'm going to do a little bit more research when I put that one together. But this one's just a, just a short one. Here is the Goodman tomb, the namesake of the Goodman Theater in Chicago. Well, we'll walk down here, and I'll see if I can show you guys the, uh, the other side of this tomb. 
This is literally right on the lagoon. So I'm risking falling in for you guys here. Take a little look in there. William Owen Goodman, 1848 to 1936, here with his family. Like I said, the namesake of the Goodman Theater in Chicago. Just across the pond over there is Cubs legend Ernie Banks. We'll work our way around. Now this right here is one of the graves that has always intrigued me, but I really know nothing about it. So any of you guys that are familiar with this cemetery, these people, the stories, please comment and let me know what the story is with this because I just I just did a, a brief amount of research and couldn't really figure out a whole lot, but this is just a really, really cool monument. This is Henry Hamilton Honore. That is just awesome. Family plot here. There's five people laid to rest. It kind of reminds you of an old church. Something pretty neat about that. And then back across the way here, we have the Palmers, which were pretty much an institution in Chicago. But this is one of the largest monuments alongside the lagoon. Might not look that big yet, but as soon as we get in here, I'm going to show you guys. This thing is pretty massive. The columns. And here we have Bertha Palmer. And I don't want to step too far in here because there's other family members buried underneath the cement in here. We have Potter Palmer, Pauline. Uh, there's a couple of them here where there's nobody under, so I think those are safe. When visiting cemeteries, I highly recommend being as respectful as you possibly can. Um, try to avoid stepping directly on graves if you can help it. Um, just try to Make sure that you leave nothing behind and ruin nothing. You know, try to be as respectful to the families as you possibly can. That's one of the things that I always try to relay on these channels. But the Palmer Memorial. Now the nice thing about the cemetery is that there is a lot of history here. There's a lot of mausoleums, and a lot of times you really don't know who who some of these people are, but a little bit of research online, it's, it's kind of amazing what you can find out about people. There's a lot of people here that I wasn't sure about that ended up being Civil War soldiers, uh, famous and important businessmen. This right here is Charles Wacker. Now, if you're from Chicago or are familiar with Chicago or spend any time in Chicago, Wacker Drive might sound familiar. And uh, this, Charles Wacker was a very prominent Chicago businessman. And he also, I believe he was the director of the 1893 Chicago Exposition. Here he is right back here. Buried here at Graceland Cemetery. He passed away in 1929 at his home in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. Which is another pretty... Uh, pretty ritzy place in the Midwest here. Now there are quite a few coyotes in here. I've seen deer in here. There's a lot of turtles in the lagoon. Here is the Porter family plot. Just beautiful stones.
And I will say this is also probably one of the busier cemeteries I've ever seen. There's a lot of people here at any given time riding bikes, walking around, um, doing video projects, art. There's people painting, drawing, a little bit of everything. So this is kind of a, a community bike path, gathering, art scene, a little bit of everything. Now I'm also trying not to get in anybody's way here as I encounter uh, people riding bikes or people with kids or whatever. I tend to shut the camera off for a second and let people get, you know, their time checking out some of the places here. But just on the other side of this wall is one of Chicago, Chicago's busy streets. And we're going to walk up here and I'm going to show you one of uh, one of the more interesting final resting places here. You guys also might appreciate this because this one's built into the side of a hill. Ludwig Wolf. I really don't know much about him, but this one has definitely always intrigued me. I've been here a handful of times and this one always seems to draw me over. It's built right into the hill here. Now one of the other well-known graves here is the Getty tomb. And this is one of the one of the locations that a lot of the people will point out here. It's kind of an architectural masterpiece designed by Lewis Sullivan. Try to zoom in on that up there. Pretty cool. Now if you can see over here there's a bridge that takes you out onto an island. That's where Daniel Burnham is buried. Daniel Burnham was the architect of the city of Chicago. If you can see the, uh, the rock right in there. That's Daniel Burnham's grave. And around we go. Here's also a pretty nice monument for Fisher. And this is just a nice, really nice location. This reminds me a lot of Hollywood Forever Cemetery in Los Angeles. Because they have a lagoon like this and there's a lot of mausoleums and nice, uh, you know, nice atmosphere like that. It's peaceful. I can't exactly say it's quiet. Hopefully uh, I'm not drowned out by a lot of the noises in this cemetery right now. I am using a, wire, a wireless uh, mic with a windscreen. I usually don't use this, but uh, today I feel like it's necessary. But hopefully... It, uh, hopefully it helps out a little bit. But the, the most prime pieces of real estate on, in this cemetery are right around the lagoon. There's a lot of haunted legends and lures from this cemetery too. It's one of, one of Chicago's most haunted cemeteries. There's a lot of stories here. Um, Inez Clark and, um, there's several different things here, and I'm doing videos on each individual thing to give you guys a little bit more uh, information and to show you guys a little bit more. There's also a uh, statue here called Eternal Silence. If that interests you, that's something that people tend to think is uh, that the blue ghost on the Ouija board is modeled after. Now this one's always intrigued me a little bit. This is Bruce Goff. He was an architect. And that's just a really, really cool memorial. That is pretty neat. And right next to him is Ruth Page, who was a, a famous dancer and pretty well-known person in Chicago, lived 1899 to 1991. And if you're also a Chicago person and you like baseball you would definitely know this name this is Ernie Banks he was a Chicago Cub 
for his entire career, he was a 500 home run club hitter. Uh, he was a 14-time All-Star, two-time National League MVP, played in over 2,500 games. He was born in 1931 in Dallas, Texas, passed away 2015 in Chicago from a heart attack, known as Mr. Cub. He was number 14, and his number 14 was retired by the Chicago Cubs. If you ever go to Wrigley Field, they have a number 14 flag flying over the outfield wall. But there are, if you guys ever check find a grave or anything like that when you're uh, researching places, for those of you that visit cemeteries, it pops up as having 97 known names here. And that's not even including some of the, uh, some of the notorious names, some of the haunted locations, um, anything like that. So there's a lot to see here. I have been here filming videos for about the last five hours now. And um, there, there's, I still haven't even touched the surface. There is so much here to see. But there are a lot of really interesting things. We're almost around the pond, but I'm gonna stop and show you one more thing here. This one has always intrigued me too. I'm not sure who this, um, who this family is, but they have a, sorry about that, there's a fly that keeps landing on me, it's getting a little obnoxious, but there is a, like a coffin type design up here, and there's a lion with a door knocker. I've always been intrigued by this, I've always loved this. But this is just one of many, many, many things here. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this. Uh, it, uh, not a very well-planned walk, and I did not do much research going around here, but I'm just taking a walk, and I figured I'd bring you guys with me to check out at least some of the, the extravagant and beautiful final resting places here at Graceland Cemetery. If this is your first time finding this channel, be sure to subscribe, hit that like button, share it with whoever you'd like. And make sure that you follow us for, uh, for future adventures. We do a lot of cemetery tours, famous graves, filming locations, historic sites. You name it, we do it. And there's going to be a lot of good stuff coming up on this channel. So stay tuned. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and have a good weekend.